Hey, it's Andy. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with Ben Kellogg. Ben is uh, the owner of Ben's Motor Works. He's a pilot and uh, aircraft mechanic and also an inspector. And Ben's going to walk us through what it takes to become an aircraft mechanic. And uh, that's all coming up. Stay tuned. Aircraft mechanic, first and foremost. Um, once you become a mechanic for a uh, minimum of three years, you're uh, eligible to become an aircraft inspector. Um, there's a large test involved with that. And then um, once you become an inspector, you can then do aircraft inspections. So here at Ben's Motor Works, we do aircraft maintenance and aircraft inspections, as well as restorations and general repair work on aircraft. So how would I describe what I do? Um, well, again, first and foremost, we're aircraft maintenance. So when somebody has a problem with their aircraft, uh, for instance, when they're doing a mag check and their engine is running rough, um, they call us up, hey, I have a, a problem. And then we diagnose the problem and then we repair it. Uh, it's kind of just like your car. You know, uh, aircraft need oil changes and general service just like your car except it takes a different kind of mechanic, a different qualifications and certifications. Um, but yeah, it's just a general mechanic, like a car mechanic. It all started when I was in my early teens and we had a dirt bike at home that wasn't running. I wanted to fix the bike and I asked my dad if I can work on it and he said no. So what is any you know, young kid gonna do? He's gonna do opposite what his parents say. So uh, I, I didn't work on our motorcycle, but my friends let me work on theirs and I got good at it. And I was also, um, I had remote control cars at that time and I'd crash them and break them and go mow some lawns to make some money to buy some parts. I get it running again. And then I crash it and wreck it. And well, in this time I became very mechanically inclined and good with tools. My parents got me a nice tool set for my birthday one year. Um, fast forward in my senior year of high school, I'm playing football. My football coach is my uh, woodshop teacher and a recruiter for an, air, an aircraft mechanic school comes in and wants to give a, a lesson on aircraft mechanics to see if they can convince some kids to join. And um, I sat through the lesson and the only thing that I saw in that was everybody in that video had a red snap-on toolbox. And if anybody knows anybody, a mechanic always has to have their red snap-on toolbox. So I talked to the recruiter afterwards and I said, hey, does um, everybody get one of those boxes? And he said, oh yeah, everyone gets a box, a red snap-on toolbox, just sign up and uh, we'll get you going. So I enroll in the school. Now aviation, it, it hadn't quite piqued my interest, but it was interesting and fun. And three weeks into the class, I get my toolbox, but it's a small black SK toolbox. I was really disappointed. I didn't get my snap-on box, but uh, nonetheless, I really enjoyed the school. Um, it really clicked with me and I finished the two years of training and 20 years later, here I am. So what is reality versus what the public thinks? Um, I think the public thinks that we may be this unattainable mechanic or unapproachable or we're um, some higher level mechanic where in fact, we're just a general, general people that like to work on things. Um, in aviation, just about everything is uh, repairable. You can take it apart, you can fix it, you can put it back together. It's not like modern automotive where you just uh, diagnose the program or the, the diagnose the problem with the computer and then replace the part. Just about everything in aviation is uh, repairable. Um, so we're no no different than anyone else except we're really good at reading manuals and following directions. I think uh, one of the greatest things about this job is taking a vehicle that's meant to fly, that's broken and will not fly, and get it back up in the air. Um, here at Ben's Motor Works, we kind of specialize in restorations and quite often we'll buy aircraft that have been sitting in neglect for 10, 12, 20 plus years and uh, restore them and get them back in the air. And I find our greatest satisfaction is taking an airplane that doesn't work and getting it working again. So what personality type is suited to this career? I would say somebody that's attentive, someone that has good reading comprehension, 
um, somebody that's trainable, good with their hands, someone that's willing to take correction, um, someone that's willing to admit that they're wrong and tell their superior that they made a mistake so we can rectify it instead of trying to hide it. Because if you hide a mistake in an aircraft, it can cause an accident if it's not discovered. So I think uh, humbleness would be your number, number one quality in being a good aircraft mechanic. The kind of person that I think wouldn't really be suited for an aircraft mechanic would be a prideful person, someone that doesn't like to admit that they're mis they make a mistake, someone that uh, um, will hide their mistake, or um, someone that's just not willing to take correction or advice from others. Uh, that's the biggest problem I find with people that want this position. So whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, I think this career could be for you. Um, as long as you're willing to work together with somebody, you can work together with somebody as small as one person or a whole group, it really doesn't matter. Um, your work will shine and I think that'll bring you up as well. So what kind of training do you need to become an aircraft mechanic? Um, well, according to the FAA regulations, you need a high school uh, diploma equivalent and you have to attend AMP school which consists of 1800 hours of training or you have to have two years of on-the-job training by a certified um, mechanic who's willing to sign off on you and be exposed to all the different aspects of, that are required by the FAA regulations um, but you're not necessarily required to be a certified aircraft mechanic to be an aircraft mechanic as long as you're working under an aircraft mechanic and uh, quite often there's shops like ours that offer internship programs where you can uh, either volunteer or uh, work at um, a lower rate and learn how to be an aircraft mechanic. You track your time, your time signed off. And if you play it well after a couple of years, you could theoretically uh, have the requirements met to save yourself a lot of money of not going to vocational school and get your AMP ticket. A day in the life of my schedule. Uh, being the owner, it's a little bit different in the sense that I have uh, mechanics to, um, to task, I have orders to place, uh, customers to deal with. So the majority of my day is spent at my desk. However, uh, my technicians spend their whole day working on aircraft. So we start in the morning with a meeting to go over the plan of attack of the day. And then normally about an hour into the day, we get a phone call from somebody with something that broke over the night. And we try to squeeze them in as best we can. Um, but each mechanic is assigned a different role. We find it best to work in a buddy system where there's more than one person working on an aircraft at a time. Um, that way there's someone there to help if you need some, someone to hold something or to give an opinion or look. Uh, we find it best to have two, or two mechanics on each aircraft um, if the job per, uh, allows for it. Um, but it could be different each day. You know, some days we're doing an inspection uh, a day like today, we're reassembling an aircraft that hasn't flown in probably 30 or 40 years. It's from 1955. Um, the next hangar over, we have a guys reassembling an aircraft after an annual inspection and doing all the repairs that were found during the inspection. Um, this afternoon, we're going to be doing an oil change for the, the sheriff's department. Uh, it all just kind of varies daily, but it's, it's uh, aircraft maintenance. When working on aircraft, it's really important to be aware of your surroundings. You know, you want to treat the aircraft better than your own property. You know, you're not going to set tools on top of the wing. You're not going to, um, you know, leave scuff marks. You're going to wipe up, you know, clean your fingerprints. It's inevitable you're going to get the plane dirty. You wipe it up, clean up afterwards. You don't want to leave tools in the aircraft. You don't want to leave parts behind. Um, we have a check-in, check-out system here where we write down the equipment that's going in the airplane and we check off as it's coming off. We have a parts list that we keep track of the parts in and out. Um, you wanna always have your manuals handy so you can reference not only the maintenance manual but the parts catalog. So as you're working on the aircraft that you have all the information that you need. You wanna work in a clean environment. You don't wanna be slipping on oil or water. Um, be mindful of your head. We work on a lot of high wing Cessna aircraft and it's uh, kind of funny but there's a saying called a Cessna forehead or a diamond forehead. And the back of the wing on the Cessna, uh, the skin is in the shape of a diamond. So if you run into it, you'll get a diamond pattern on your forehead and everyone will know that you didn't duck. Um, you want to be mindful working around a propeller. 
Uh, at any time, if somebody touches the wrong component, that engine can turn over. And if you're in the way, the prop doesn't care who you are, it'll turn you into two. Um, you gotta make sure the keys are out of the plane, out of the ignition switch, because if you turn the, the prop manually, it could start. And even if the keys are out and you turn the prop manually, it could start. Um, you want to be mindful of tires uh, when the aircraft's rolling. When I was younger, um, an aircraft, I was in front of it while it was moving and it rolled over my foot and it broke my foot. It wasn't a very big aircraft, but it was big enough to break my foot. And uh, I think twice before I walk in front of a plane now. Um, you want to be mindful of the ground, you know, uh, make sure there's no parts on the ground that can get sucked up by the aircraft or if you're working around turbine engine aircraft, you don't want to get sucked into the intake. It happens. Um, you just got to be really mindful of your surroundings and treat the aircraft again like it's the most important thing in your entire life that you're ever going to work on because truly it is because it will have people in it and those people are important. You don't want them to have any problems or accidents.